Hey, what's up, everybody? We Man here with my buddy, Poncho Moeller. What's up, guys? Let's rock and roll. And this is Little Revolution. Little Revolution. But I just heard you're selling comedy tickets for 25 bucks? I'm not selling anything. I was just talking to our friend here, our guest, and I was saying how our tickets are kind of expensive sometimes. And then they charge you $25. So you're charging your friends $25 to come. Yeah. And then they have to buy two drinks. It's like, shit, just... That's like 80 bucks. Yeah. That's an just, $80 night just to come see this guy. And you better be funny. Yeah, I better not bomb. You better bring it. Sometimes if I'm though, your fun. friends want you to bomb because they want you to sit up there and like just uncomfortable and they're just laughing while you're just fucking saying the worst jokes ever. If I'm going to be your bringer, you better bring it. I, I know. <laughs> I have brought it. Most yeah, of the time. it's been brought in. Um, I wanted to ask you, What's up? what happened the other night when you came to my show at Yamashoro? Like in the beginning of the night, which is something that happens to me like every day. But uh, uh, what happened to you? When your you drunk ex- friend. No, <laughs> she wasn't d- drunk yet. She was drunk, dude. <laughs> your drunk friend that you invited from your horror movie? I didn't invite her. She just showed up with her friends. Okay, well, she was excited to see you. Yeah. And she didn't see you yet in the club. And I walked in, and she's like, oh, hey, hey, hey. She didn't say your name, though. Yeah. So she didn't call me you. Yeah. She just goes, hey, it's uh, Bethany. Abby. I, it's Abby. Right. Yeah. I didn't know what her name was, and I was like, okay. She goes, Abby? And I'm like, okay, Jason. And she goes, well, wh- what? And I'm like, well, what? <laughs> and then I walk away, and I'm like, Punch, you think your friend's here? And she doesn't even know your name. <laughs> That was hilarious, dude. <laughs> that felt good. Well, yeah, it's your your gig. Your twenty fans were there. <laughs> I know, but the fact that they thought you were me, yeah, never happens. But it's I always w- the other way around. But I wonder what she was thinking afterwards, because she knows you're married. Oh, she felt like shit. But she knows you're married too. Yeah. And then she's like, "Well, wait a minute. What about the other guy?" Well, yeah. that's why. I mean, you got to come to more gigs with me, man. All right. Well, we'll invite you know, lots of chicks. No, not really. I, I, <laughs> I don't know many. <laughs> I'm just bragging. Well, speaking of chicks. Yeah. Speaking of ladies. Ladies. Women, women. Females. Females. And comedians. Comics. Yep. Stand-ups. Our guest today. Good friend of mine. I've seen her for many years. Do her stand-up. She's amazing. We're so happy to have her here today. Performs all over town. Right? All over the world. All over She's the world. She's international. But really? She's all over the world? She's international. Damn. Thank That's you. That's so cool. Yeah. You ever heard of Kill Tony? She yeah. was there in the beginning, bro. Like killing Killing Tony. it and killing Tony. Oh, uh, cool. Yeah. All right. Let's, let's welcome Ali McCoskey. Woo! Yay! Yeah. Yay. How are you doing, Ali? I'm great. Awesome. So glad to have you. I was expecting one wee man, and now I get two. This is very exciting. (laughs) Oh, don't worry. The women love it when they get two. (laughs) (laughs) What's better than one dwarf? Two. Yeah. Two. Yeah, that's true. That's what I've always said. Yeah, exactly. I don't want one. I can have two. You want two. Make it three, honestly. If you have a third. Whoa. Whoa. We know a third. We did have a third. What happened to him? Brad Williams. Oh, we, yeah. we he's traveling it. all over the world yeah. now. He's you know? being funny. He yeah. big timed us. No, he didn't. <laughs> he little timed you. Yeah, he did. Yeah, the comic has little to revolution. Throw in a, has to chime yeah, in with a, a little joke. A little, a I mean, it one. feels very on brand for the pod. <laughs> yeah, a little revolution. A little revolution. Well, coming, and she's also never even seen it. Yeah. No, nope. we've been out a whole season. She's I'm never not, watched I'm it. I'm not big seen into it. the pods. No. Yeah, what it's are you big into? I am. Bi- oh, what what what's yeah, what your is, thing? Like in the car specifically, yeah, or well like you, instead your time, of pod? Your time, you're driving, you're heading somewhere, and you you're getting something to get you going. It's music. Sometimes I like to do complete silence. Sometimes I like to just really be in my own head, talking to the cars around me. I'll have like full conversations, like, "Oh, you're trying to cut me off." No way. Like I will so have it's kind of road ragey kind of talk. a little bit, but in, in kind of a polite way. It's just like I have this thing. I have this conversation going on in my head that I think the other drivers are having with me. <laughs> and we're just kind of going back and forth about yeah. like who's faster or whatever. But then I will like to just jam out. 
I like to listen to like cute little alternative boy bands. New and kids on the block? Like no. Like bands nowadays or bands, bands from nowadays. like the 90s? Sometimes I'll have kind of a throwback day where I want to listen to some NSYNC or Backstreet Boys. Ooh. But I, I, I'm loving this Spotify DJ. Have you guys heard the Spotify no, DJ? No, I have not heard the Spotify DJ. It's this AI little robot with a smooth voice. And he's like, hey, I know that you've been listening to a lot of alternative rock here's here's a couple playlists i put together for you and it feels like someone really knows me i feel so loved he does know you so i don't have to do (laughs) he knows you he knows the music you're listening to and he's ready to add to your yeah so could so i could i listen to spotify a lot so if just type in dj in the search so i go to the spotify dj and then he'll know what i listen to he'll know and you can switch it up if you're not liking what he's putting out. He'll change it. He'll mm. be like, on Mondays, I'm you listen that. to a lot of smooth jazz. And you're like, uh. put that on. You know what he's like? He's like the guy that's kind of into you and is making you a mixtape. Yes. And he goes, I know what you And you like. didn't really ask him to, but you're like, I guess this is nice. I'm not going to make <laughs> yeah. out with you, but I will take what you're giving me. Yeah. You're yeah. like, he knows me. I'll mm-hmm. Did you ever make a girl a mixtape? Like, I made Tons of mixtapes. I always thought about it, but I was like, I, I don't think she's going to be into my music. We, I would like talk to the girls and be like, you like this? Like, and then I would play my songs. What was yeah. your go-to song that you'd put on a mixtape if you really oh, wanted to impress a lady? There was, there was, there was a couple of songs. I'm trying to, Del de Vivo. No, this was like Rat, Quiet Rock. Okay, like, rock. I played Just, some rock for them. Mm. So no, so, like, smooth hits. Like, oh, he's so romantic. No smooth hits. No super like fly. That. No super fly. Damn it. I was kind of, like, alternative, you know, back then. I wasn't, yeah. I wasn't trying to be lover boy. I was trying to be rock and roll. So you never, never, like, Nirvana or any of stuff like that? When, once I got into Nirvana, I wasn't making mixtapes anymore okay. for the ladies. Yeah. yeah. I, like, just missed the mixtape craze. Like, I remember my sisters having mixtapes that their friends would make for each other. Yeah. And I got, like, hand-me-down mixtapes. So I remember <laughs> getting my first car, and I'd have, like, Britney's Summer 2006. <laughs> and I was like, ooh, what was my sister listening to? And it was oh so gosh, fun. That's... But I, I never, like, really got to participate in the mixtape craze are you the baby of the kids i'm the baby how many siblings you have i have two older sisters they're seven and five years older than me okay yeah. that's it that's kind of because they're closer in age yes. to each other so you're kind of like i was kind of an only child but with two cool like adults around yeah like we were all sisters but they were on a very different level yeah. than i was growing yep. up Do, uh, is your family out here in california um, not anymore. I'm from Long Beach and everyone's kind of moved, but my mom's still in, my mom's in Pedro. Do they ever come see your, your comedy yeah. shows? Yeah. Nice. They're very supportive. Where my mom, if she could go to every single show, she would. She's oh, like number right. one fan. That's She's like my mom too. And I'd yeah. say the worst shit. And she's just like, <laughs> I know my, my mom and my grandma now are like, say whatever you want. Oh, gosh. Anything, as long as it gets to laugh. Oh, say so whatever you do you that want. grandma joke in front of your grandma? I've, told I've heard your to grandma her. joke. It's hilarious. I've told every time I visit my grandma, I'll just like kind of roast her. Not in like yeah. a mean way, but in like a grandma. Like the last time I visited her and now that she knows that I'm talking about her, she's like, go all in. Say whatever you want. Oh, like I I love you. And this most recent time I visited her, she's like maybe 93 or like 120. I don't know. <laughs> but I visited her and she's like, for some reason, putting on makeup. I get to her place at like 6 or 7 p.m. We're just having dinner at her house. She's like getting ready and she's trying to look all gorgeous. And then she gets up from getting ready and it takes her so long to just get out of her chair and like into her walker. And I was like, grandma, it takes you 30 minutes to get ready and then 30 minutes to get up from getting ready. And she's just like, she's laughing so hard. It's like, I just said the most hilarious thing she's ever heard in her life. That was good though. And then throughout dinner, she's like, what did you say again about me getting ready? She's like, you gotta use that. You gotta use it. That's hilarious. I, um, my wife's grandma just died at 105, okay. and we would go visit her. That is incredible. 105. 105 years old, and every time we would go visit her, I'd fall asleep because she always had like the heater on. Yeah. Like even in the oh, summer, it was like Jesus. 95 in there, and I would just like 
fall asleep and, and and like right in front of them and my wife would just keep talking to her grandma but I don't know something about like the way the smoothness of the way she talked or what she was talking about that would just Old knock people, me the hell out dude <laughs> they have the coziest vibes yeah it was you know, so cozy to, yeah exactly to get very comfy. cozy vibe yeah they're setting themselves up for what's coming you know a long nap yeah so they got they got everything ready to go the long um, nap. I saw you also kind of roasted your sister at her wedding. Oh, yes. That was a good one. That yeah. was a good one. I wasn't planning on like having a funny wedding speech because it was almost expected. And when someone's like expecting you to be funny I, or like expecting you to do anything, I'm very like anti expect so i'm like i'm not gonna f i'm not gonna be funny i'm being serious it's your wedding like <laughs> it's gonna be heartfelt i want people to cry i don't want any laughter and then like as i started writing it it was just so easy yeah because i just i feel like i know her so well i feel like i know her husband so well and they're both like I mean, my sister, I've known her for a very long time. So there's certain things that are so specific to her. But then her husband is such a personality <laughs> himself that I was like, this is great. Yeah. And um, yeah, as soon as I started writing it, I was like, fuck, like this is going to be funny. And I didn't want it to be funny, but like whatever. And yeah, it was really fun to do. That was awesome. I watched it. I was like, this is good. But now my my brother-in-law and all of his friends are like, hey, I got a, I got a bachelor party. Uh, like, I got a, I'm trying to do a roast or like, oh, I, I have this wedding. I'm like, I don't know your friends. Yeah. I'm not trying to like be funny for your friends who I don't know. You're like, tell them to come to my show. Yeah. <laughs> They'll get it it's there. It's inspiration. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Um, so when I met Allie... She was full on buzzed cut haircut, yeah. like to the T, like yeah. number one, bzzz, gone. I was like, was it a, whoa, was it cancer? No, oh. <laughs> no. Why are you laughing? <laughs> yeah, was, she was rock and roll, dude. No, okay. She was like, I, I don't know. Sometimes people shave their head for other no, reasons. No, no. She okay. did it. It was she, by choice. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And you had super long hair and you're just like. No, I don't no know more. if it was super long right before. Uh, yeah, I think it was actually pretty long before I shaved it. But I was just like sick of doing it. I was, I don't know. I just was like, I want zero options. I want my only option to be like, it's shaved. Did it feel good? No wake up and go. Yeah. You wanted wake Not up and go. Not have to worry about your hair in the morning. Just, yeah. yeah. You just get up and you're ready to go. It was so nice. But then after a while, you're like, okay, I would like to be able to like put it in a ponytail <laughs> or like do something with it. Um, but it was fun. I didn't realize, I'm sure a lot of men are used to this, but like when you shave your head, that first time you feel wind or like a breeze, oh, yeah. you're like, whoa. Yeah, it's different. I have it's... never felt like that sensation before. Yeah, it's a whole different sensation. Oh, it's so cool. Yep. And then just petting it, it was so fun. <laughs> I felt like a little chia pet that hadn't gotten enough water yet. Especially when it gets like the little fuzz. Yeah. It's just fuzzy. I call it, it the good. Manchi Chi legs. Leg. Uh huh. Velvet See, head. but once it got around like your length, yeah, it was tough. Yeah. That was tough to pull off for me. Yeah, I, I, I didn't that. do it well. I think when you have a shaved head, and like if once you and you want to decide that you're gonna grow it up, grow it out, there's like a couple months where it's at a stage where it's you're just like, dude, this sucks. Yeah, I you know. just look like you have been electrocuted. Like, you know, you're just like, fuck. And I can't imagine like as a woman, it would probably be even tougher because you, you and you have to get over that hump. Because mm -hmm. yeah. you're thinking, all right, should I just shave it again? Yeah. <laughs> or what am I Get doing right it. now? Yeah. Like, this is a weird spot. <laughs> well, this is crazy. And I had it like so bleached at the time. It was like so <laughs> white and just like fried <laughs> from bleaching it. There was just nothing I could. I just I looked like um like an alternative Ellen DeGeneres a little bit. <laughs> it was just kind of like business casual. I looked yeah. a little bit like Draco Malfoy. And I would try and do the slick back look. But somehow that just... Looked at like nothing. I could not pull that off. But luckily, I had a lot of confidence. And at the time, I was like, I look so good. It's crazy. And you now looking back at photos, I'm like, wow. I like girls with like shorter hair. Well, that's what you find out, too. Like, when you shave off your hair, you find out the guys you get, like, who are the, into you get it. You see the neck, like the shoulders. Yeah. I think it's sexy. Yeah. I like I'm a long hair guy. I'll, I, I like, like long hair, too. I'm I'll, just saying yeah. like the, no, the short, short hair, hair is good. Like, yeah. Oh, even shaved head. I was like. 
She pulled it. She, yeah, yeah, I feel she like I did pull it. off the show. You pulled gym. it. Yeah, thank you. You did pull it. Yeah. Did you guys meet at a, at a comedy show? Yes, we did. Yeah, okay. at the comedy at store. At the comedy store. Nice. But my history with Wee Man goes further than that. He just doesn't even know. Well, I have told you. It was just a one-sided thing. Oh. I, I, I worked at Chronic Taco for one day. Which one? I've told you why, about this. The one, one in Long day? Beach. That's not oh, on not what? on Second Street. The one that's um, off like Stearns and Studebaker. Okay. Uh-huh. But before we took... So I had the one in Redondo. Yeah. And then we moved it and took it over. But you worked there before we took it back over. Right? Oh, props out, I don't props know. out to Chronic Taco. Yeah. yeah. I don't know, but I, I only lasted one day. And then what they, happened? I don't know. I they thought fired I did you? a, I thought I did a, a pretty good job. They fired you? Maybe. I mean, I did like or, one training, yeah. like a full day of training, and then they were like, she cannot come back. I think I just got flustered. There's so many options to choose from. There Could is. you? Did you I learn how think, to make a good burrito? Like, I mean, what was I your... think before Chronic Taco, I was good at making burritos. It's kind of my thing. I love oh, burritos. Okay. Big burrito girl. Um, but I think just the idea... I. I, I feel like I was just too young and everything just overwhelmed me. I can see that. So I was just like a lost puppy. Like, ah, <laughs> uh, I, I didn't know what to do. I remember I went into a chronic taco and I was able to get free food. Yeah. You know why? Yep. I told them. <laughs> no, no. It was another one. I called one. them all. I said, oh, you called them all. They thought I was you, but they were like. There's a little wait. people discount? Uh-huh. Damn. You just no, it was free. free. <laughs> you know the, you know they how thought they thought ha- I was him. <laughs> yeah, oh, I know. Shit. Yeah, <laughs> and then, but it was like I knew he, that because they were like, "Wait a minute, no, he gets a lot." I can't. I can't. Okay, <laughs> you know, yeah. like what I mean. It was just one of those. Like <laughs> he gets a lot of perks because of me. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's funny because it, you guys look nothing alike, but I don't it's think just so because you guys are both little people. Yeah, because yeah. if you guys were, you know. Uh, my height, I don't Average. think. I don't. I didn't say that. <laughs> Everyone says short king now, short like king. like that's what like people say for little people or or shorter yeah. stature. But I want to. I, I like little prince. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> Little Prince. Little Prince. You want to be called? I'll call you Little Prince. <laughs> no. Okay. All what day I long, dude. That's I a cool name. Little Prince? Little, Prince better than little Prince is it better than Short King? No, we, Little Prince is good. Good. Here's my friend, Little Prince. <laughs> no. No, no. <laughs> He's not a little person. He's a Little Prince. I still have a name. But the Little Prince is... Well, and I think it goes well with Marcel, your name. Yeah, Marcel little Hernandez Prince came up with it. And uh, I thought it was pretty dope. Because he's a shorter guy. I like it. It's on. It Don't works. call me that, though. You just said... You I were- know, but I was joking. I, I was just saying in general, I like it better than Short King. Like, hey, he's a short king. Uh. Do you get offended when guys who are like 5'8 are like, I'm a short king. And you're like, hmm. No, but you know what's tall. happened before is... Uh, Dudes of shorter stature that aren't little people. They're like they're five short. two, five uh-huh. four. Like they, they're they're used to doing their jokes, you know, about like the struggle of being little and short and dating and all that. And then they see me come into the room and they're like, "Fuck, man! Now I can't do my short jokes." Yeah. And I'm like, "Good, don't have a mm. nice set." <laughs> yeah. You know what's so funny about comedy? What is the battle? Like every comedian wants to see that other comedian just fail right in front of them you know i don't, I don't think I don't, so i don't want to see anyone fail you just said yeah it you were like just you, saying you do yeah no, you're like, no you're i don't friends. use it never use it again. i didn't say never I, I said good don't yeah 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 it wasn't like that but i was like good don't you the didn't only... say it politely yeah. good don't you know now you're trying to change your story dude it's like good you know don't <laughs> you know hey ha- sir just... have a great set though you know Good. Don't. Okay. <laughs> no. So Good. Wrong. Don't. Have a nice set, so asshole. Yeah. That is the attitude you did. You five foot six motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's so hard yeah. for you. You're, you're five foot eight. <laughs> oh. <laughs> wow. I think what is fun, though, is like, I don't necessarily like seeing comics do bad, but I do like watching comics just do a terrible room where they're going to do bad, but not because they suck, just because the vibe is terrible. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. 
like when you see someone do a show in front of like 12 people and everyone's kind of sca- like those shows are fun because it's like there's really nothing you can do like it could go well like are they uncomfortable to laugh because the joke is kind of like or, or they just don't no, know just when the circumstance is yeah. bad like it's at a bad venue or just like not enough people show up and it's just uncomfortable or it's like three in the afternoon yeah nobody's had a cocktail yet everybody's kind of just like what is this is this comedy or yeah. you know I, I hate it when i do a show and like the comic before me his whole thing is like crowd work mm. and it's just terrible mm-hmm. insulting like and the audience gets so like just like they put up a guard off, yeah they put, they put up, up a, a guard, guard and then you have to go up after them and bring them back which is fine, but it's just like, God, ah, dude, like, why couldn't you just do your set instead of just insulting the entire audience because they didn't like your crowd work? Yeah, I think there's like a new because so many comics are posting crowd work. A lot of the new comics think that they have to do that when they start out doing comedy. And I think that like crowd work is something that you kind of build over yeah. time and as you become a better comic. So it is interesting to see like this new kind of crop of comics who i i did a show and one of the newer comics was like oh are you gonna like are you gonna go up and do crowd work and i was like i don't know like i I don't i never plan on doing it if it comes up then i will but feel it out yeah like if someone says something yells something out or something yeah or like if i just feel like oh i kind of want to like before i do this next joke maybe i'll set it up by kind of asking a question and talking to someone in the audience about what i'm about to talk about and see if it like segues me into it. Have you ever had a bad set where yes. like you've go- uh, well, obviously. How long have you been doing comedy for? Um, I think it's been like nine years now. Nine Damn years. it, Dan. Yeah, killing it. That's. Yeah. I like that. I like. I like it when people are like almost at a decade of I doing know. comedy. You know, like that's it's a long crazy. time. You stuck with it. You, you're, you're still here. Yeah. I've only been doing it for three years. Oh, sick. Yeah, but I, I really love it. You yeah. know, it's. It's it's there's no f- other feeling like it, you know, as far as like, you know, like doing a room where everyone's just laughing. Like, mm-hmm. I'm not sure if they're laughing at me or with me, but I don't really care because yeah. they're just laughing. <laughs> Fucking great. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good feeling. It also it's it's like I feel like it's only been three years for me, but also at the same time, I feel like I've been doing it my Forever. whole life in yeah. some ways. So it's very bizarre. So when the pandemic happened, did you do the whole Zoom thing or did you do the parking lot thing for a bit? Like what happened? Yeah, I just yeah, I did some of the Zoom stuff. And then after a while, I kind of was more selective about what Zoom shows I did and didn't do. And then, yeah, I did all the outdoor shows and um, I was a naughty girl and I ended up going to like Arizona and doing some shows mm. and then Texas. Um, but that was like, I feel like that's not being like naughty. Austin, Austin, Texas that's being like being back well, in your back in your skill. I don't think that, yeah, that, that I think you you just wanted to fucking get out. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what was happening was like right before the shutdown, like yeah. when everything was locked down. Yeah. I did my first two headlining weekends ever. And I was like, oh my God, like I'm doing it. Like I am a working comic. I'm headlining. I'm going out of the the state to perform at these comedy clubs and headline. And then middle of my second ever headlining week was like the LA shutdown lockdown. And yeah. I was like, I don't want to be stuck in Denver. I've never been through a lockdown. <laughs> I don't know what that means. And so I canceled my weekend. I didn't even know if I was allowed to do that. I'm like, will they let me come back at some point? Like, am I a bad comic for canceling? And so I flew home. I, I only did one night. I was supposed to do the whole weekend and I flew home and I like went into lockdown. I like went to my mom's house. I stayed there. And then after a while, shows kind of started happening in like Arizona and Texas. And a lot of the comics who were booked to headline ended up backing out. And so they were like, can you do them? And I'm like, well, yeah, because when things open up, I don't know if I'm going to be able to like headline again. Like, I don't know how it's going to work. Where are you leveled? Yes. Like, well, I have to start over. And so I was like, I'm I'm doing it because if I am headlining after this, I don't want to be rusty. I've only done like one and a half weekends of headlining before yeah. this happens. Like I need all the practice I can get. And what is that, the, the time on your headlining set? 
Um, like Hour? contractually, you have yeah. to do at least 45. Okay, got and it. And when I first started headlining, I was like, I don't even know if I have, like, I've never done a full 45 minute set. So I'm like, hopefully I have it. I think I do, but you yeah. don't know until you actually do it. Yep. And then I was like very relieved my first time because I, I did it. I was so nervous. And then I Where looked down at the clock. Where was your first time at? It was at the um, Tempe Improv. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, which was like such a great first experience because the manager there at the time was this guy, Casey. Uh -huh. And he was just so nice. And I feel like you hear all these like horror stories of like, especially being a female comic on the road, like you just hear about all these like skeezy promoters, you know, comedy club <laughs> managers and owners and, <laughs> you know, and Casey was just so nice. And like, yeah. he was like a dad. He was just was so Was that helpful. your first show that you did outside of um, California or Los no, Angeles? No, I think I had like like gone out of the state and done some shows but never like my own headlining is it show. different doing shows out of california like as far as audience wise what they're capable of listening to what they, they you know what i mean like i mean i think it's like city to city because yeah. even like i just did a show in ventura and that's like a very different vibe than like west hollywood big so difference I think, <laughs> yeah i mean if i go to somewhere like Denver, it's going to be pretty similar to L.A., but, you know, every every city, I feel like, is different. Yeah. Especially, like, yeah, when, when I do, like, these major cities, like, like um, I don't know, I feel like a Scottsdale or, like, a Phoenix, Arizona. Yeah. Like, all the major cities are always fun. It's always the ones where you kind of get out of the major city <laughs> and it becomes a little bit more rural and suburban and you're like, ooh, what's going to happen? Uh -huh. Like, do they think I'm some, like super liberal like woke fem like i just imagine sometimes in these cities they're like oh she's from la oh I, you know i bet i know her and like know what she's gonna oh, and yeah. that's always fun i love doing those shows where it's like such a mix of like people <laughs> and throw them a curve and then yeah. see how they react and yeah. then they're like oh my god i love her she's so funny well and it's like i think in my set too it's like i kind of make fun of myself a lot and yeah. so then kind when the i idea, go and yeah. make fun of you it's it's like it's not personal i'm making fun of myself like we're all just weird people doing weird stuff yep so that's always fun have you ever had a heckler that you were just like oh god like th it, that was like one that wouldn't stop and you're like come on okay we got it yeah what, what happened i mean i think i think the worst is when someone is like positively heckling because it's just a tough spot to be in. It's like they're disrupting the show. Mm -hmm. They're distracting you. They're distracting the people around yes. them. But they're also positive. So you don't want to be mean. Because you're like, no, I like you're saying really nice things. But you're just like shouting I love you <laughs> instead of feeling it. And that's always hard because you don't want to be mad. Because everyone's like, fuck you, Allie. Like she's she's like, you know, giving you You can't some be praise. like, I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Yeah, please the shut fuck the fuck up. up. Yeah. yeah. But there was one, I remember I did a show in Detroit and there was this woman there and she was like just so drunk and she like kind of was nice at first, but being really loud and drunk. And so then I was like, hey, like, thank you so much. But like, this is kind of my time and like I love being the center of attention and I feel like now we're competing and I don't like that uh, yeah you know and I'm like trying to be silly about it and like not call her out too much and then she's I said something like kind of nice to her but also like shut the fuck up and then she's like well fuck you oh and I was God. like okay I and I normally I'll do jokes about my mom being an alcoholic so it was like easy to be like you remind me of my mom and now I'm like it feels like I'm a kid again you know yeah. I'm like trying to mess <laughs> around and she's like well it's fucked up why you said about your mom and like you're a bad uh, daughter and oh. I was like I'm sure you're a bad mom you don't and, seem like a great and at places <laughs> like this like the the promoters that throw it and the security guards, they, they just let this go on until it gets a little like Yeah, well, that was the worst tension. part was like normally you expect them to be like, hey, ma'am, like, yeah. we're going to have to ask this you. This isn't but your show. This isn't your. Yeah. yeah. And I don't think the they Marquis did anything. The says Allie. Yes. But it doesn't say you. Yes. And so that was. <laughs> he would love it. Yeah. <laughs> that was rough. Like no one called her out. And then eventually like too long of like me talking to her. They finally were like, okay, time to go. And she was just like kicking and screaming the whole way out. And then now I have to spend like the next five minutes like, hey guys, we're all good. She's got, you know, you have to like re 
regroup the room. Yep. We re put the chess pieces back together. Yeah. Everybody needs to be back in their place. Yeah. Um, best show ever Ooh. where you walked off and you're like, oh my God, this is what it's about. This is why I do this. I mean, I don't know because when I feel like I'm just like really locked in yeah. and I feel like I'm on a good wave and the audience is on a good wave and we're all like meshing. Yeah. I, those like, I mean, they stand out in the moment, but it's never going to be, I'm like, so I was in Manhattan Beach, <laughs> I did a show, it was an outdoor show, and then it felt really good. Like, yeah. but I think the coolest was doing an arena with Joe Rogan, because that's Whoa. just like a bizarre, surreal experience where you're like, I have never done something like this before. Like this is. So you were opening for Joe Rogan? Yeah, I did a couple shows on the road with him at these arenas and it's wow. like 15,000. What the hell did that feel like? That's insane. It's just so fun. Like, Was it, were you in the middle or was everyone? Yeah, it's like in the okay. round. Wow. Yeah. And so that was always just surreal where it was like, I don't even remember how I did or like how I felt. It was just like the experience itself. You're like in the green room, which is like, you know, whatever, whatever sports teams locker room. Yeah. And yeah, it's just to hear 15,000 people like laugh and like cheer is just the coolest. And then I think like, damn, that's so like, that's insane. Yeah. That's and, next level, dude. That's, like I've done like 300 people and I and I get really nervous in the beginning yeah. but after like the first like 15 seconds like it just goes away yeah and I'm just like okay I know what I'm here to do but I can't imagine 15,000 people yeah man. I think just yeah any large group it feels so good to be able to be like oh like they seem to have had a good time like yeah. it just feels crazy but then on the flip side, I think like this was two years ago, I'd written like kind of a goals list. I was yep. like, here's what I kind of want to accomplish or like work towards this year. And one of the things was I was like, oh, I want to do like these comedy shows that are kind of like punk rock, like punk music, like these punk like pop up shows. Like, you know how these bands will kind of go city to city and they just perform. I was like, I want to tour like a musician, not necessarily, punk, but I, I just want to tour like a musician because as comics, like, we just go on the weekends. Mm -hmm. You go on the weekends, you come home, you go on the weekends. You're you not doing home. a Monday, Tuesday, you Wednesday, on or the Thursday. Road. And I was like, I want to, yeah, I want to go to a new city every night, like, almost like a road trip. Like, I want to yeah. do it like that. And then through some sort of act of God, I was able to go on the road with this musician called St. Vincent. And so I literally got to, like, be on a tour bus with the band, yeah. go to a new city each night, and, like, do those shows. And that was also What would you do, crazy. like, 15 minutes? I would do, I think, like, 30. Wow. Yeah. Because it was like she didn't have an opening band. It was, like, it was me opening. And did the, how did, so was it her fans that? It was you, her fans. And how did they react to it? Like, because it's something it's, different, you know what I mean? When you're going to see a totally. show. And then like she's a rock like, and roll okay, show, yeah. Yeah. Well, out comes, you know, Ellie Mikowski and she's going to be funny. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it definitely, I think it went as well as it could go for that. Cause like they didn't know that it was going to be comedy. So yeah. I would just kind of get up there and be like, I, I don't, I'm, I'm not a musician. I'm just going to talk about my butthole probably. <laughs> I hope that's fine. <laughs> you know, you just got to like let them know. And it went well, but it's definitely, I mean, I've been to concerts. Even when it's like an incredible musician, I'm like, I want to see the fucking band. Yeah. Who I bought tickets to see. No, I get it. So it just became like a fun thing where I'm like, okay, I'll just kind of like chat and maybe talk to them a little bit and just feel it out. So every show is a little bit different. Yeah. Depending on the crowd. That's yeah. a cool, like a little goal list and that you were able to kind of get through. Do you yeah. have any, um, do you have favorite comedians? Like, like name, like, like three favorite comedians that you kind of grew up watching that you're like, that's what I want to do. That those. Yeah. It's always, I always want to have like a really cool like answer where you're like, whoa, I've never even heard of that person. And I'm, <laughs> yeah, they were just kind of this niche comic that I really <laughs> got into. <laughs> but my favorites were like the big, loud, like silly ones. Like I really loved D Dane Cook growing I love up. Dane Cook. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fifth Vicious, grade. Vicious Circle. Yeah. Remember that one? Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I loved <laughs> My sister would pick me up from school. She had the Dane Cook album, and I was like, yes, like this rock. Have you ever done one of Jay Davis's shows? 
Uh, yeah, I've done yeah, a couple. Yeah, he, he kind of grew up with... We, we had him on the show, and he was telling us Dane Cook yeah. stories. Yeah. He's um, funny. Jay's yeah, so funny. that was like... So Dane Cook and... Dane Cook, and then I um, really enjoyed Kathy Griffin. I loved like her oh, yeah. stories talking about celebrities, and she just was so like unafraid, and she was loud, and she just talked shit on everyone, and it was so fun. I love that. She's I love good. That, yeah. yeah, she's yeah. good. I like her. And then... Um, I'm trying to think of who else, like, really. I, I Like, Ali Wong, I really like. She's good, too. And then... Did Kathy Griffin stop doing comedy? Or is she still she's doing... Back. She got, oh, like, she's back. She got, like, she got big-time canceled. That's for, yeah, I think, kind of a fucked-up reason. She posted these photos. She took these photos with, um, like, a Trump's head replica, like, okay. bleeding out. Oh, and people God. got really worked up. It and was right in the beginning, of before <laughs> hit, when the campaign started. Like, people have done way worse. Way dude. worse. Like, yeah, she, like, yeah, but she even tried to apologize after it and say, hey, I'm a comedian. It was a joke. And the people were just like, not having it. Yeah. yeah. She got big time canceled. But now she is coming back and she's doing these theater shows and so i'm trying she's coming to back right in time <laughs> i know kind of. i know yeah that's very true uh, uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh my god yeah uh, she really is okay so one more one more um oh god i mean it's hard like now that i'm in the thick of comedy it's like I have so many comics that I like really enjoy that mm-hmm. it's hard to be like who. Maybe right, one nowadays, yeah, one nowadays that like you maybe now. travel around with or like that you're like every time you see them they're consistent as hell. Oh, you know I really enjoy watching Mark Marin. Yeah. When I watch Mark Marin at the store, it always feels like so relatable, but kind of at the same time like not re- like. I've never seen him at the store. Oh, I've it's just so seen like fun. his specials and stuff, but I think personally it would be like. A better experience there you know 15 minutes of just yeah. him storytelling you know his newest special like made me laugh out loud it was and that's hard you know when you're watching a, a comedy special alone it's it's not the same when you're at a comedy show it's laughter like truly is infectious yes and when you're alone watching it it's very like i'll be like hmm, that's funny it's hard to like actually laugh out loud if you do laugh that was funny. Like, yeah. It was funny. Yeah. Because I've caught myself watching uh, comics at home, and most of the time I'm just sitting there like, uh, uh, and in my joke. head, yeah, yeah. I'm like, that was good. That was good. And then finally, blah, no way. Yeah. His new so. special from bleak to dark. It was, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Do you have anything coming up soon, like in the books? Um, I mean, when's this coming out? This is coming out in probably like two months. Okay. I mean, I don't know. Maybe. Okay. I all right. Probably. If all you right. go to AllieMakovsky.com, that's where I put all of my tour dates. Nice. Um, but I'm just trying to work on some stuff. Like, are, you, are you traveling around? Like, are you headlining traveling around? Or yeah. Are you open? Yeah. Who's so your opener? I don't really have one. You don't travel around No, I just, right now, it's like whoever is a local in okay. that city. That's how they set it up. Yeah. I mean, okay. uh, until I'm making like big bucks, then I'll be able to like pay for a comic to come with me. That's what I always want to do. I want to open yeah. up for somebody. That's yeah. that's like my goal. I know. And it's so my fun goal. when you're the opener because it's like yeah. you get to do a shorter set. Yeah. People aren't there yeah. to see like... They they came to see the comic that they came to see, and if you can make them laugh, then like sweet. But there's yeah. no pressure on you to sell tickets. Yeah. Once you're headlining, you're like, I hope people show up. Like you know, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. But yeah, until I'm making the big bucks. Sometimes I go to shows and like I'll post them up on Instagram. You know, like that's what we use to post up and advertise. Yeah. And people will show up from the show that I like had no idea that i haven't seen in years and yeah. like yeah i saw you posting and i'm like damn that's great that's a, such a good feeling you know like i hate when people i know show up it stresses <laughs> me out you don't like it when people no i mean i i like it but sometimes i'll have like a friend from high school who i haven't talked to in a long time and they're like oh i'm at your show and i'm like oh god like <laughs> yeah. I, I don't do you ever have people <laughs> like maybe this is just because i'm newer but friends that come and that support, and then before they come, they're like, hey, are you gonna talk about the same stuff? I mean, and I'm just like, you fucking cocks. Yeah. <laughs> What's I get it. 
Because <laughs> they've heard your jokes already? Well, they see, like, most people do, like, five-minute sets or ten-minute sets, and they have, they, they've, they like, fine-tuned it to be, like, just yeah. polished. And so that's what you work on for a long time, and you do these sets. These are, like, your show sets, and you do them. And then you'll do them a few times, and those people maybe have seen you a few times, and they'll be like, "Hey, I'm coming. I'm totally coming. I'm bringing some friends. Are you gonna talk about the same stuff? You know, because they want to hear something different. You know, <laughs> and you're like, "Yeah, I probably am, but like, there's other comics that are gonna be there that you've never seen. Like, have you ever, you know, that are headliners, dude? Yeah. Like, it's not just about me. It's about everybody else that's yeah. coming." I feel like the only people who ask me that now are like my sisters or my mom and my dad. (laughs) Like, are you writing? Are you doing new stuff? (laughs) But I think my friends, like they will, sometimes they'll come and support me, but they don't come often enough. I think when I was first starting, I was constantly like, come to my show. Will you like, it was very new and exciting, but I think now they'll come maybe once a year or maybe more than that. But I feel like, yeah, they don't, they don't care as much anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Did you, during COVID, because, like, it sounded to me, and I was just thinking about it, I was like, oh, she bailed out just like we did. Like, yeah. I stayed locked down for a month, and I couldn't handle it after that, and I said, I'm skating. I'm skating wherever yeah. I want, and it's going to be fun. Is that kind of like what you did with comedy, where you're like, okay, I'm tired of being indoors. I need to get places and start, you know, telling jokes. I need to make people laugh. Yeah, I mean, I was like... I was like scared at first, so I didn't care about going out. I, like I, I obviously wanted to do comedy, but I'm like, well, everyone's locked in, so yeah. like no one's doing it. There's no, there. I didn't feel the need to be like the one person really <laughs> going for it. I was like, everyone's kind of taking a break. Like I'll just enjoy this time as much as I can. Did you do a lot of writing during that time, or any writing? I think I did. Yeah. I think I did, but I think at first I truly was like, I'm going to treat this like a vacation. I was like, I'm at my mom's house. She's got a nice little outdoor space. I feel like the weather was nice that time of year. It was. I was just like, I I was like pretending I was at an EDM like music festival. Like I just had music (laughs) playing in the backyard. I was wearing a bathing suit. I was getting sunburned. I was just like vibing out to all this like electronic music. And is that your thing? Electronic music? No, but for whatever reason. At that specific time, it was the vibe. Because I was trying to pretend like I was truly at, like not at my mom's house during a pandemic. I was like, I'm at a music festival. So that was the vibe I was creating for myself. Did you ever get COVID? Um, like in the beginning and that's a, why you were scared? No, not initially. I just think like all my friends were really... I mean, no one really knew what it was. And so it's like the stories was I was so telling myself. confusing to me because I had friends that were like, this is a joke. And then I had other friends that were like... Stay inside, dude. You're going to die. Like, you know, like, it's yeah, nuts, man. I definitely aired on the side of caution initially. And then, yeah, after a month, I was like, I'm sunburnt. I'm sick of this music. I'm sick of my mom's house. <laughs> <laughs> and so then that's when I started, like, you know, people started doing the Zoom shows. And um, and then I was, yeah, I was what, so. Before you keep going, what were the Zoom shows? Because hor- Zoom horrible. meetings I had during that time where it was horrible, like dude. nine people talking to each other and we were trying to plan stuff. But what were the comedy Zoom shows? It was interesting because no one quite had it figured out. Sometimes like the entire audience, like the people who were sitting and watching the show, like they would all be unmuted. And then that was chaotic because you could like hear someone peeing in the back th- background <laughs> or like, you know, cooking lasagna. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and then there were some where they would just like designate like one or two people to be like the audience laughter. And so then you're just counting on these two people to really carry it for the rest of the audience. Or if you have shitty service, I remember being up in the mountains yeah. and my wife was doing it. She's a comic as well. And she would, she wasn't doing shows, but she was like uh, in uh, classes, like comedy classes. Uh-huh. And she would be in the middle of the joke and the screen would just freeze. Yeah. So it like <laughs> it just takes you out of the moment, you know? Yeah. Like, fuck, I can see that. Sucks. Yeah, I was just like losing my mind. I was like, none of this matters. Like, this is all just silly. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Totally. <laughs> no, no one's getting a career off of a Zoom comedy show. I mean, people, but then I felt like Instagram Live is where people were kind of finding their own little 
platform that Absolutely. they were yeah because there's that girl z way who does these interviews and she has her own tv show now where she interviews people but she started by doing these instagram lives that got really popular during covid because everyone was just stuck at home looking at their phones yeah so it's like that kind of was the way to go meanwhile i was just like painting my face like i was on instagram <laughs> live like painting my face with lipstick like fully red and i'm like on omegle talking to strangers oh is that where you wait there's a there's a picture in your instagram where you have like joker lipstick, yeah like, that was the beginning like, of it and then i just here? kept going yeah. and i don't know if i'm gonna get canceled for like red face but i did it and yeah, it was a weird time. Red face? Who's red face? I don't know, but I'm just, you know, future you wouldn't get planning. Can- you wouldn't get canceled. Okay, for- good. You're not... Blue Man Group's not coming okay. after you. Dude, she's, she's I'm defending their the strawberries, dude. I'm, well, the I'm Blue, Blue Man-, Man Group's biggest nightmare. Yeah, Blue Man Group's not worried. Wait till they say, fine. see Red Girl Group. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a weird time. So, just because we were fishing through your Instagram and stuff, are you dating now? Like you got to. Yeah. And it's been a year. It's been now. It's oh, been, longer? Yeah, it's been like over three years. You guys have oh, dated wow. for three years. But before that, were you on a, uh, were you date? Uh, were you single for a long time? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was single for a while. I've never, I like, I don't know. Maybe I have like commitment issues, but I'd always just get like the ick really soon. Well, you're also traveling a lot yeah. and doing all that. It's and a, I, I feel like I can be very particular, like all I'll not like someone over the smallest reasons. Like something will just bother me. He, that's is that is that called he, the ick? The ick. He said yeah. a bad really, you have joke. the ick if I something the, one normally, little thing bothers yes. you. Yes, and so I'll like, like. But you can maybe help him fix that. No, I don't want to. <laughs> I want it to be done already. So. She that's, already that's it. That's she it. already got over him. She's like, yeah, you, got, you got I'm a like, bunion on your I'm toe. Out. We're done. <laughs> yeah, <can't laughs> we're do done. It. And so, yeah, I mean, for whatever reason, I didn't get the ick with this guy. And now we've been together for a while. Is he a comedian, too? No. But when you posted him, you're like, "Uh oh, I can't believe it. It's been a year. I know. And I haven't posted, but we're going to throw you out there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was like, if this lasts for a year, then I'll like do a little post about it. (laughs) Make it exclusive. Yeah. (laughs) You know. Make him feel calm and collected like feel like, that oh, I'm not man, keeping like, him a secret. I am your boyfriend. Yeah. yeah. So How, it's official. Where'd it's you official. guys meet? We met on Tinder. Oh, yes. the Tinder yeah. thing during COVID. Oh. Yeah. I never did dating apps. Do you? Did you? Do you Punch? do a lot of online dating jokes? No, I mean I have. I mean I have a joke about when I was on Tinder, but I don't. It doesn't, to me, feel like a lot of online dating material. So when you when you when you guys are talking on Tinder and then you yeah. met for the first time, where you just like, oh my god, well, this he, guy, yeah, he is the one. Yeah, he just looked so good in the oh. profile. He was so hot, I, <laughs> and he was like willing to meet with me. So I was like, okay, I love meeting hot people. I wonder <laughs> if a girl ever looks at me and goes, God, you look so good. Probably. I want to ask you have your a wife. wife. I, my I wife. Want to ask well, your yeah, wife. I know, I know. I've, I've been married a long time. I'm just saying, like you know, out on the street before, before when I was a single man. Mingling. I mean, I think there's something. Girls like, are more seek, like you know, more internal with their with their feelings they don't when see they. Him. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like everyone, like, because I'm sure people would see my boyfriend and be like, "Ew, nasty ass." But <laughs> and like, I'm sure there's people who I think are super attractive that you know. Yeah, you're you're right. I think, yeah. I mean, what was that meme? Like, Honey Boo Boo's mom? That Do you remember Honey Boo Boo? <laughs> no, yeah, Her I remember. Her mom was, like, Honey married, Boo-Boo. and everyone would be like, if Honey Boo Boo can find love, why am I still single? But it's like, everyone's <laughs> got a person. That so, they you know what's stir. funny is, like, with, uh, with, with that, like, I remember when I started doing comedy, I would go with my wife, and she would show up, because she would go and do the open mics with me. And the, 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 the open micers, the, the dudes that were usually single and, like, lived in a studio apartment just they would always f- say like like what is it with like you either like why is she with you mm. like you either got a big dick or you're rich like it was never anything else like that's like the reason why a woman has to be with a guy either yeah. she he's 
Rich always got a big dick. Like they're, I'm like, what about I just make her laugh? What about I'm not an asshole? Yeah. What about yeah. like you know like it's just so lame, so well, fucking superficial. Well, open mic girls are just horny, sad losers, you know. So <laughs> oh. they'll find anything to be like, what? I'm alone. Why aren't you alone? You yeah. should be alone. <laughs> I can't be the only one who's alone. There's got to be something. Nope. We took a vote. Everybody here is yeah. taken except you. Yeah. You're the only loner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would be a bully like that if yeah. someone was like, I'd be like, nope, this is it. This is how it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, have you guys traveled together? Yeah. I mean, when we got together, it was during COVID. COVID. So, there so you wasn't... live together now. We live together now. No, I'm that's saying cool. traveled together. Okay. But, yeah. you know. But, like... I mean, during COVID, there was, I mean, we. it felt like we always kind of lived together because nothing was open. Yeah. During, like, there was nothing we could do besides, like, go to the park or hang out at each other's house. And so, then I remember the, right around that one year mark, we took, like, a road trip to the Grand Canyon. Oh, oh that's nice. Cool. And so, that was, like, very cool. And it was, like, our first time, because we were in Arizona... It was the first time we had gone out on like an actual date to a restaurant, sitting indoors. People next to you. Yes. And, everything. and so it was like, wow, like it's been a year and this is like our first real like dinner date. Nice. And so it was a cool, cool little experience. Arizona, Arizona is cool. Was it during summer or spring or good weather? Because um, Arizona can get hot. Yeah. I mean, I think it was actually the perfect time. I think it was around like October, November. Oh, yeah. So it wasn't too hot. It also Perfect. wasn't really cold. Yeah. Yeah. Good time. Yeah, I love my sister lives in Arizona, so now I'm there all the time. Oh, okay. What part? And I've like fallen in love with it. I was gonna it. ask you, you mentioned Arizona a lot, I was then that makes sense. Your sister lives there. Yeah. So. Yeah. Cause that's after I was at my mom's house at the beginning of the pandemic, I went to visit my sister and stay with her for a little bit. And it was like as soon as I got there, it was the Wild West. Everything was yeah. open. No one was wearing masks. And I was like, Oh my god, like uh, Did now, that freak you out? At first, a little bit. I was just like, oh, wow, like everything is fully open. And then I had to go back home eventually. And I was like, oh, yeah, the mask. <laughs> this uh. is very, we have to do this. But it was hard because I had just done like a couple of weeks living I, young and wild and free. And then I was like, it went pretty well. Hey, Jason, um, yep, during COVID, you. is that when you bought your Sprinter van and wanted to go nope. skate everywhere and mm -mm. do all that? Mm -mm. Oh, you had it before? I did it a year before COVID. Okay. And then you sold your house and then that's when you did that's it. That's when I did it. And then uh, October of 2019 is when I finally moved into another place. So this was pre-COVID. But I still had my van. Was that in Highland Park? Highland Park, yeah. That's where you were doing the, uh, doing a lot of barbecuing and Barbecue smoking. and stuff. We never hung out and that was right next to my house. Yeah, no, we didn't. Was... What were you doing? Were you by yourself? No, I had a lady at the time. Oh, nice. And then we didn't. A little Highland Park lady? Yeah, Highland Park lady. Nice. We didn't do, we didn't last too long because we moved in right away. Mm. And so, yeah. you yeah. find out a lot about a person. Yeah, right away. With them. So then COVID hit and then mid-COVID, I was like, I'm over L.A., and I moved to OC, and OC was like the wild, wild west. Yeah. And I'm like, everything's open? Yeah. I'm living here. And that's why I moved to down where I'm at now. Yeah. Where are you so, from originally? Torrance. Oh, Torrance, okay. Redondo, Hermosa yeah. area. Yeah. You so, guys are from the same area. Yeah, yeah I was born in Torrance Beach. Memorial. I was born in Italy. Okay. But then moved. Or Sicily? What? No, Pisa. Oh. Yeah, wow. Pisa. Yeah. Why is that? Uh, army brat. Okay. My dad was in the army. Okay. Met my mom. I was made in Germany, but I was uh -huh. born in Italy and then to L.A. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Those scientists yeah. did a number on you in Germany, huh? Oh, yeah, they did. They made you the superior They made you a little right meatball. Here. Yep. They spicy meatball. Oh, I'm a spicy yeah. meatball. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good, that's a good, yeah. yeah. And meet my little prince. Yes. <laughs> spicy meatball and little, little prince. prince. There we yeah. go. That's hip hop a... troop. <laughs> what? A hip hop duo. A hip hop mm -hmm. duo. We keep our clothes straight, though. Yeah. <laughs> we don't wear them backwards. <laughs> oh, like crisscross? Yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> I'm, I wish that I was like a fully formed, you know, child at that point, because I think that's such an epic time to grow Chris up Cross with time. Chris Cross. Like what a fun time in just the world. There you know what's crazy? Like the, during those times, like everything was cool. Yeah. Like every music that came out, everything, you know, even, you know, if, even if it wasn't your thing, like you could, you know, you knew it was good. Everything yeah. just had such like fun to it. It was like fun on steroids. Everything was like a big production. Nothing yes, was, was like kind of quiet. Like everything was just loud and in your face and like silly. Yep. And you were like before that time. I mean, I was born in ninety five, okay, so I like probably was around. That's crazy. Like right That's when I that graduated. Time. Whoa. Graduated high school in nineteen ninety five. 91 and you were conceived i'm finally at that age where like someone will be born in like 2003 and i'm like how how like i am finally the older person who's like well, you graduated that year like it's just unfathomable to me <laughs> yeah where i'm like no i i'm th i'm the baby i'm the young one not anymore not anymore nope just you're a regular young to me adult. jeez yeah you're young to us oh, we're old that dudes. feels good uh, we're old dudes. I'm you glad to be young, young to someone. A young lady. Yeah. Yep. I we're can't wait 70s I'm... kids. Whoa. You're 90s. Yeah. So. um, I thought of this and I didn't ask it, but I want to ask it now. So when you were a kid. Yeah. And you were being funny. You must have been because mm -hmm. you're the, you know, you're the last child. They always say the last child gets away with stuff. Caused a lot of trouble, making fun of grandma. Mm -hmm. What were your dreams to be and desire? Like, what did you want to do mm. before you realized you were going to be a comedian? Yeah. Especially growing up here and like in the inter entertainment industry. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I think like when I was young, I don't know. I had like, I wasn't one of those kids who like really was like, oh, I'm going to be this. I think I just like I would change every week. I wanted to be something new. But I do remember in seventh grade, we I forget what the class was, but we played this like computer game and it was like a, a truck driving simulator. Okay. And so you'd be a truck driver and you'd have to do pickups and drop offs and you'd have to drive through all kinds of weather and you'd have to like allocate time to like get gas, stop for food, take a rest. Okay. And for whatever reason, I just like loved this game. And I was like, I want to be a truck driver. There's mm. nothing I would love to be more than be a truck driver. You get to go to different cities. You get to, I don't know, just be kind of like this lone wolf on the road. And in some ways I kind of do that now. I go to different cities. I travel alone. Like whatever you and talk to other drivers some of those trucks are set <laughs> up with cool rooms inside too like yeah i know god i'm like this is I dope know. you need to get a cb radio in your car yeah that would be especially sick. for now because you like talking to other yes. drivers i would love that but they'd probably be pissed at me because i drive like crazy and they'd be like yeah we were just talking shit about you stop cutting us off are you the girl in the silver prius uh -huh. we see you yeah ally funny it says allyfunny.com uh -huh. whatever on your life so, yeah we got you yeah but now there's a game my friend was just telling me i've i've like tried googling this game because I loved it so much in seventh grade. I'm like, it's got to be still yeah. out there somewhere. So I'd Google every variation I could figure out for like truck simulator driving seventh grade, like anything that I could find. And my friend just messaged me and it's on the Nintendo Switch. There's a truck driving sim. So I'm like, I think I'm going to buy a Nintendo. a Nintendo Switch and just play this truck driving simulation game. That's, great. That's should, good. Man. Especially yeah. when you're on the road. Especially. Maybe they have like a, a, a VR version Ooh. of it where you're really into it where the VR you're, in, scares you're in me. it yeah vr i can't do vr if my eyes are closed for too long i just assume i'm gonna get fingered at some point <laughs> i don't know why i just feel like someone's well if gonna you're like, doing it in your house it just be your boyfriend <laughs> there's a ghost there will be something I just, I oh my god you're like oh stop stop yeah, that, and then yeah. you're like oh what and then yeah. you're like bradley was that you and yeah. bradley's like i wasn't home during yeah, this time exactly i can't trust my eyes <laughs> being closed for that long well uh, Ali, it was great having you on. Thanks for oh having me. Oh my goodness! Me. Yeah, you were great. What a breath you. of Good fresh air! <sighs> yeah, we haven't had a woman on yet, so <gasps> wow, that, I'm in this your season, first. So. in this season, you're I'm your first lady. First yeah. lady. Wow. Of it's season an honor. two with the, uh, what is it, the, the prince, guy? little prince, with little prince. No, is it and little spicy prince? meatball? I can't believe, yeah, it's little prince and spicy meatball. 
That should have been the. Maybe you can add that to the name. Little Revolution with Little Prince and yeah, Spicy Yeah, we'll cross meatball. out Poncho and cross out Wee Man. Little Prince and Spicy Meatball. Yes. Oh, yeah, sure. perfect. I'm going to just wear a t shirt from now on that just has a spicy meatball yeah. on it. Yeah. Merch. Yeah. Merch idea. Yeah, we need yeah. to get some merch, dude. Yeah, we do. Yeah. You can get You're a little. Lagging. I'm not lagging at all. I do everything. Here. No, you don't. <laughs> you don't do shit. <laughs> I do it all. This <laughs> guy. Well, thank you, Allie, for coming. Wait, for one more thing. What? How can people find you? They want to see. You. Um, What's your website again? Social media is not Allie Mac, and then my website is AllieMakovsky dot com. Allie Spell Mikofsky. it out. You'll figure it out. Is that yeah, on your link? Google can people it, go it'll on your link on, you. on on your bio on on the Instagram and yeah. click on that? Yeah. For your shows and stuff. They can find. Yeah, it's it's yeah. easy. If you know how to use the internet, you'll be able to. You'll find, you'll find Allie. Yeah. Believe it or not, there's a lot of people that are terrible <laughs> at there, the That's not my demographic. If you're too old where you can't figure out yeah. a link, then you sh- you can't get A lot of people my shows. age are like, how do I find him? Like, just go to my Instagram. They're like, what's that? <laughs> yeah. Just well, kidding. We're not Thanks, adults. everyone. Don't forget our one sponsor, Nima. It's a, ne- it's a supplement, N-I-I-M-A. Punch and I both take them, mm-hmm. and we jog. Yeah, look at every dope I look. You look dope, dude. Yeah, You're a little prince now. A little prince. I'm glowing. You're glowing. Cousin Nima. Woo! And don't forget, if you go to it, Nima.com, and in the coupon area, put L-I-L-R-E-V, you get 15% off. Yeah. Boom. Trying to get another sponsor, bro? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get another sponsor.